So I figured I would start the tour off with the setup that I've had going for the longest, which is my 18 by 18 by 24 Exoterra, which houses my Epipedobates Anthonii. I think these are definitely one of the most underrated dart frogs out there because they're super easy to take care of, they're nice and colorful, and they're so bold. It's crazy considering how small they are, they just do not care. You can see when I'm filming them, not only are they not scared of me at all, but one of them actually came right up inches away from the camera trying to check it out to see if there's any food. One of the only drawbacks to them is that they can be really loud and they call a lot. Like seriously, every single day, every morning, all the time. Right now I have a group of six of them, and I'm hoping to upgrade them to a much larger setup later in the year, but I'll explain that more later in the video. One day, when I was using a temperature gun to check the temperature in the enclosure, I discovered that they'll actually chase after the laser from the gun, just like a cat would. Overall, I think they're pretty awesome, and definitely something you should consider if you're looking to get your first dart frogs. Now, moving on, we have my 18 by 18 by 18 Anxoterra, which houses my two Ranatomea Amazonica Akitos. These guys are honestly really hard to get video of because they're quite shy around the camera and usually run away anytime I try to record them. Now, they're both males, but that doesn't stop them from courting each other all day. I'm not sure if they just forget that they're both males, or maybe that's just who they are, you know, love is love, I guess, I won't judge. I do however plan on getting a few females and upgrading them all to a much larger enclosure sometime over the summer. Now taking a break from the frogs for a minute, we're going to move on to a setup that's honestly pretty sad. This is the temporary setup my ball python has been living in because I broke the doors on his actual terrarium. He's been doing pretty good in here and was already first in line for an upgrade anyways so he shouldn't be in here for too much longer. I have an idea for a really cool DIY enclosure for him, and I'll be posting the entire build to my channel probably in the next couple months. Moving back to a few more frogs, we actually have the most recent animals to arrive at my house. These guys are what I like to call goblin frogs, or what they're actually known as, Tenefrin adorima. I think they definitely win the prize for weirdest frogs that I have. Instead of jumping, they prefer to walk, and they just look completely ridiculous. Because I got them so recently, they're living in this temporary quarantine bin setup until I move them into their actual home in a few weeks. Even though I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be nocturnal, I found this one out exploring during the middle of the day, so I decided to give him something to eat to see if I could take a video of it. Now, moving on to the final frogs that I have here. These are my glass frogs, and even though I'm not really sure if I could pick a favorite animal that I had, if I really, really had to, it would probably be these guys. Even though they're in this temporary bin setup, they're super fun to watch when they're out at night hunting and just climbing around. Here you can really see why they're called glass frogs. The plants in the massive terrarium that I've built for them are growing in really well and I should be able to add them within the next few weeks. I've already recorded a full video showing how I built this entire terrarium, which I should be posting on this channel soon. Now, for the last of the big animals, we actually have to move outside of my room into the living room. This houses my desert king snake and, like everything else, we'll be getting a massive upgrade coming soon. She spends a lot of her time hiding, but whenever I spray down the enclosure, she always comes out for a drink. So that wraps up all of my reptiles and amphibians, but I felt like I might as well show you my two aquariums that I have set up as well. This was a super simple black water aquarium that I set up a few months ago, and honestly, it's not looking great. I've been pretty lazy and haven't done a lot of maintenance on it, but the plants are still doing good, and I think with a little maintenance, it'll be looking great again. 
And then this is a no filter aquarium that I have set up with a bunch of cherry shrimp in it. I started with six of them and now there's probably 30 to 40 of them in there. I pretty much do no maintenance whatsoever other than just topping up the water. And considering that, I think it looks pretty good. On camera, the moss looks pretty yellow, but trust me in person, I think it looks quite a bit better. So there you go. Other than small random stuff like springtails and isopods, that's pretty much every animal living in my house. I definitely could have gone into a lot more detail on everything, but I wanted to make this just a really quick video so that people could get an understanding of what my room was like before all the upcoming videos I have showing all the changes that I'm going to be doing. Anyways, thanks for watching. Okay, like and subscribe. Bye.